Hello, good morning. Um, I'm also very happy to be here and I have to thank Carolina for the opportunity. I was quite wow that when <laughs> she, um, she invited me here. Um, a few words about myself. Um, daily life, uh, I started out as a software developer. I went to the uh, project management part and then I went to business analysis and now I'm like Scrum Master and more than that and uh, product owner and so on, making many, many things. And uh, volunteering side, I am the president of the Romanian chapter of IIBA, International Institute of Business Analysis, organizing conferences and also being a speaker and a teacher. Um, before we go down to business, I'd like to each of you to think for one minute when was the last time that you had an aha moment, an Eureka moment, okay? Doesn't matter if it was related to your business or your life. So one minute on that watch, okay? Think when it happened. So something that was like, wow, I did that. Remember, try to remember. It is hard. Last time that you were, this was me and I, it was great. Still time, I think. One minute can be long. Okay, how many of you managed to recall such a moment? Yeah, so we are very creative people because us by human nature, we are creative. And not only us, everything that is alive is creative and it's innovative because he needs to find solution to survive and also needs to find ways to uh, get better, to improve. So the sunflowers always turn to the light. The hermit crab always looking for a new house, how it grows. And us, we, we needed warmth and we needed protection. And we keep inventing until now. Last year, do you know this robot? Have you seen it? Check it up, uh, check it on the internet. Last year, he was able only to jump on a box. Now he does great gymnastics. So this is the way us as people are innovating. Now, question for you. Do you see the company that you are working for as an innovative company? How many, of, but do not think about uh, just applying the latest technology, really being innovative, applying those technology or whatever processes in an innovative way. So how many of you see the company you are working for as an innovative one? A oh, couple of them, so. So it is good, <laughs> it's a good starting point. Let's see how, how you can, um, add extra to what your company is doing. So because the topic of today is built in innovation, to have a mindset uh, for being innovative, not only us, but also the company we are working for. So some numbers, if we are to start a company today, um, it will stay theoretically in business for, for about 33 years. Uh, a couple of years, ago, like decades ago, it would have stayed in business for 100 years or 75 years. But uh, if we are going to start a company let's like seven years from now, it will stay in business only for 12 years. Why? Because it's a lot of changing in the context, in the industry context, business context, innovation and so on. And you have to stay afloat. You have to find ways to rise above everything and to continue your business in a way that brings value. So. I'm sure that every CEO that you know, your CEOs, your past CEOs, are coming with this all the time. We need to innovate, we need to be an innovative company, we need strategic innovation. So there is their motto, it's something they are asking all the time. And they are not just asking, they are trying to put in place um, processes, mostly processes, by bringing in of consulting company, putting processes, um, training people just to get the company and the people to be more innovative. But they want something, but it does not always get us they want. 
The question is why? Why does it happen? And how, what should be done to avoid this? Uh, from your point of view, what is innovation? Do you, ha do you have a mic for the room? So, who has, the car to, who has an idea or what, what do you think innovation is? Any hand up? New solution for a problem. New solution for a problem. Something else. It's the ability to uh, develop, new solu uh, develop new solutions. Okay, the, so yeah. the keyword is solution. Something else? Maybe a new perspective. Perspective, a solution, a perspective. Something else? Please. Needs to give uh, some new value. Right, that's it. It's a new solution that has to bring value. If they are replicable at the economical cost satisfying a special need. So it's value, a solution that brings value. Uh, to put, like we are talking about discovery, creativity, innovation. So let's put them in a scale to, to make differences and to see exactly what we are um, meaning when we are speaking about innovation. Fire was a discovery. Some lightning and there was the fire. After that, the, the bell invented the phone. But what happened next? It's an innovation. Okay. This is an example of how innovation is seen. This thing is real. It's from my annual review. The one that my, the, my company is spreading around for the managers to fill in. And as you see here, it's innovation. And highly skilled. How on earth, sorry, can you uh, measure how innovative and how skillful you are to innovate? Because usually when there is an an innovation, there behind the scene, it's usually a problem, something that bothers you for you to have to find a solution. And to, you cannot be highly innovative all the time because there are not always problems that you have to solve. And it is, uh, they are trying to put like everything in, to put innovation in a frame and to measure it. It is quite hard. And then in there are so those uh, workshops, training and processes they are trying to put in place, they are very strict and that they are very, uh, how can I say it, uh, stressful and demanding. Like give me five new solutions that will bring our product on top of the market in the uh, next three months and uh, increase our uh, revenues by 20%. Come on. So it is too demanding too in a box. And these things need to be review because what they are doing is like uh, telling somebody sing okay not everybody is born with a voice but most of the people with proper training will manage at some point to be able to decently play an instrument so that's what we are trying to do with innovation not to sing not to be like Einstein or somebody else we just need to decently do something good and that improves. Um, innovation in an enterprise. Okay, the enterprise wants to be innovative. And uh, there is their part of the, uh, the, in the story, the processes and the support that they have to bring in. But also the people in that company, in that enterprise, that they need to have a mindset for innovation, to think in an innovative way, not only when they are asked for, but in daily life. So to bring, to make the innovation a way we are thinking. So let's see how this could be done. Because the first thing about innovation is that nothing comes from nothing. So you need to start from somewhere to have some, some background. You need to have experience, knowledge and attitude. Because when you come with a solution, when, when you had your aha moments. They, you had those moments because there was something that bothered you or because there was something that you needed to solve. So, or you had a project, personal project can be, and you wanted it to, be, to see it alive. So you did something with the knowledge and experience that you have. And to have more chances to be innovative, to be more successfully innovative, to have more and more ideas, you have to improve the way you see your experience, knowledge, and attitude, and not so to how, to, how you see them, but how you use them further. So when we are talking about the experience, what you should do? Um, you should travel. Travel more, travel to the other end of the world. And also travel into your city, 
one exercise you could do here is to go to see all the gnomes and try to find what was behind them, what they want to say, and to build story around them. Building a story, writing a story, it's a way to improve your creativity and innovation spirit. Also, try to take a new road to job every day and, and eat with new people, because you'll never know from a small discussion what idea you can have, because you can, from one thing goes to another, you might um, speak about things related to your job or to your family. Um, just, okay, you might find uh, where to go on your holiday. Oh, I never thought of that and answered all my questions. And just a question for you, how many new people have you met here at conference today? How many of you have new contacts in your LinkedIn and written there, I met this person at that conference and we, we speak about that? Try to do this exercise during the breaks. Don't be afraid to go up to a person and say hi. Don't underestimate yourself saying, oh, now that person is too smart, I'm not going to speak with them. Because the other person is as scared as you are about saying hi to another person. So be courageous and meet new person because that's another motive, reason for which you are here at the conference, to network. Um, okay, to have the, to play with Lego and solve puzzles, this is classic. Try to listen to, uh, to new music because uh, there will be new different synapses in your head. And if you really have the time, try to learn uh, a language that is written from left to right because this way you will write with your uh, left hand and you'll have new synapses and you'll be smarter. And uh, in not the least thing, try to do something that stretches beyond your capabilities, like running a marathon. It really teach you a lot of things. Uh, if nothing else, the discipline. Okay, then when it comes to knowledge, try to read as much as possible. And uh, don't say, okay, I'm just re write, uh, reading novels and I'm reading just uh, fantasy or I'm reading uh, just uh, books about the scrums or Java or Azure or things like this. Read books for children, like the science books for children that are quite well written and you'll have a lot of information in a small amount of time and from there will spark many, many ideas. And also artists, uh, uh, books f uh, written by uh, Malcolm Gladwell, I love them very much, especially Blink and um, David and Goliath, because um, he's a guy that puts together a lot, a lot of data and writes story around that data and you have no idea how, um, how this can enrich you and give you new perspective. And that guy really, really read a lot and gives you the synthesis. And also uh, try to read uh, like Complete Idiot Guide, things thing like this, and write, read from all the domains. Like uh, from psychology, what I'm uh, write, reading now, it's a book called The, uh, the Games People Play. It's, a f it's written by a psychologue and it's so thin, but you learn so many things about how us interact in our family life, a job and not so much, in, in, a, in a few phrases, it's great. So read as much as possible. Um, the one who have children from, what is the most common question that is asked by your children? Why? Yes, do the same, as much as possible. And ask questions more than you give answer. Do not wait for the other one to, um, to finish talking so that you can talk also. Think at what he said and ask him questions because it will help also the conversation and, and the way you build the relation. And most on that, ask why not? And if you are stuck, go to Google. But remember, everybody goes to Google. So it's just a starting point. Okay, there is the attitude. It was the experience because as human first, we learn from the experience like putting the hand in the fire and we realize that it, is, uh, it burns and then we'll have knowledge and uh, learn how to use it further and then it will, uh, was our attitude. So the time, uh, the attitude uh, towards time, it helps you be more creative and more to have more, uh, more new solutions. So one thing, when you are stuck in, a, in an airport for a couple of hours, either that because your plane is late or because uh, it's a, you have a long connection, what do you do? Please do not Facebook, do not Netflix, 
try to read something, try to read something on your phone, try to prepare for the, if it's a business trip, try to prepare for the business meeting ahead. Use that time. So don't do things that are, that don't bring you value. It is true, it is fine to look on Facebook, but try to, to do something more and waste time, really waste time. Because with all your knowledge and experience, with everything you have read, uh, those need to, uh, all that information needs time to go in the right drawers in your brain and to have new um, synapses and to have new patterns and to have new habits. So have a run, have a stroll in the park and just let your mind be clear. And then, it's something that I love, it is called semantic intuition. Uh, one guy that is very good at this, it's uh, De Bono, the one who wrote The Six Thinking Heads. And he also wrote about having a beautiful mind and having um, to be an interesting person. And there are a lot of um, exercises, games in, their book, in his book on how to be more creative. And one of the things that uh, it is mostly used there is that of associating um, unrelated concepts, totally unrelated, and they will spark many ideas. And uh, there is a camel with a, well, a sister, so it is something that does not exist in reality. And then it's about, um, his Mr. Sting, and about, um, here um, you have uh, the link there. So uh, it is an interview for, uh, the guys with the, how it called, it was the CNN guys, he left. The one that had the uh, sustainer. Okay, I'll, I'll remember his name. He recognized that for many of his songs, his first writes title and then he'll see. And um, um, I was impressed on how many speakers are, are here at the conference. And I'm organizing conferences in Romania also, and not only there. And it is very difficult to convince people to come to speak. And because, oh, I have nothing to say, I'm not interested. Say, okay, if you'd go to a conference, what you'd like to learn? Oh, I I'd like to learn about that thing. And how would be the title that would catch you? Uh, that one. And how what would be the key element in the abstract that would attract you? That and that and. Okay, so you have your lecture. Please go study and prepare it to, <laughs> because in, in the next three months you have to, to present. So this is the way to start like with the final and to have something. Don't always think, oh, I'm not going to, just try what I want to do and put it there and then the rest will come. Okay, there is another thing I love. It is called the vivid memory. And to, to remember it, please uh, re uh, try to remember uh, Proust à la recherche de temps perdu. Because the book starts of him remembering the smell and the taste of a muffin her, his aunt was doing was preparing when he was little. Because uh, when we have an experience, we um, usually um, remain in like two or, uh, two or maybe three of our senses, memories. But try when you uh, enter a room to think about the temperature, to think about uh, the smell, about the sounds, about the luminosity in the room. So every, if you try at every moment, to cover all your five senses and to build memories on all of them, then you'll have more synapses and you'll be more creative in the end. So this is what is called vivid memory. Go beyond like the simple one, add always. Okay, so this was with, uh, with us. Now what the company, the place we are working, what they can do to improve innovation. Um, it happened that uh, the company where I'm working, it's uh, on the second uh, run of something that is called internpreneurship. The idea is to come with ideas and if they go through a certain number of selections and, um, and they uh, fulfill certain criteria, the project and the idea is selected to be um, implemented as a standalone business and to see if it brings value. And I'll tell you in the end how it and, and, finished because uh, I uh, submitted a project that was selected. So what, is in, uh, what are the elements that the company would need to take into consideration to make itself more innovative? First of all, innovative employees, then the organizational culture, area that needs innovation, and the recognition for the contributor. 
the innovative employee, it's very, very important because not, pe not all the people are the same. They, it is true that we all want to be more creative, but some are more creative than others and uh, in the way they behave and in the way they were built, let's say, uh, they build their personality and way to see things and the way they try to improve themselves. So it is very uh, strange, but the people that are more creative are the ones that are very lazy and very smart. And this is a thing that was uh, discovered by somebody in eight, uh, the, uh, 1819 something. It was a Ger German general and uh, what, how he, I might say that in today's uh, world we cons might consider it uh, quite uh, discriminant, but it's quite true and holds true today. So, um, clever and lazy are the leaders and the innovators. So he, these are the people that uh, will bring most of the ideas in your, in your business. Um, you can find gener German general, clever and lazy, you'll find it quite easily on internet. Um, I've had uh, some thought about putting him here or not, because it's, it's a little bit like this. But it stands to today and it's a known standard and it is applied. Then, um, as an organization culture, it is the company to, to help you be more creative, to uh, help you trust yourself to come with idea. Because you might have that uh, I'm not proud of myself, I'm not, I'm not good enough uh, approach sometime. So the company should come always with something that will contrabalance you and help you. So if you think my idea is crazy, it's not good, then you sh uh, as a company to solve this, you should put in place an anonymous way for people to submit, uh, submit ideas. If there are not enough people submitting and coming with ideas to you, then you might put some gamification in place, like giving points, giving awards, giving like uh, the best uh, ideas of the month get a little, I don't know, something, a beer or, or a little toy or something. Um, if there is lack of method, like you can submit uh, to an email, you can submit uh, to Jira, you can submit to uh, some, uh, uh, to put a poster on a wall, then you have to, uh, to have something, a process in place, and it goes also well with anonymous submission. Um, hackathons are great, but uh, people might feel constrained and put in a box like, in 48 hours I have to come up with something great. So in this case, it will be good to have some unsupervised continuous ideation. It's not easy because you have to give people freedom, you have to give people time to do that. And, but it is easy to have to let them have an experimentational culture. That is especially in the in the IT when it comes to new technology. Uh, add some um, spikes to your backlogs um, and to your to your sprint, sorry, so the people can try something new and to see how it works, how it improved. Uh, if there is not, if you have some very expensive ideation workshop and the people do not participate. Look, you as a facilitator and also the company, find somebody that is very charismatic in the, in the company and add him to the, to the workshop. It's important because he will loosen up the atmosphere and the people will be more, more themselves. And um, if they are, not all, all the people in the company are friends, so break them in small groups. Uh, give time for creativity that is related to unsupervised continuous ideation. So put time aside for that. And be open at ideas that are, uh, that are uh, uh, presented and uh, listen them. And if you find them yourself in a company where you, you have ideas and you try to share them with your manager, with, your, with HR, with friends or so, nobody takes you for what you are saying, leave that company because they, there's no reason to, to stay there. Then, um, beside the, um, helping you, it also has to give you a stage uh, to, to be innovative. It can be an ad hoc stage like putting uh, 
uh, spikes in your uh, in your uh, sprints. Also, it can be something formal as a design thinking workshop, uh, work with, um, which, as I uh, told you before, creative workshop, ideation workshop. Read the bono, and you'll have a lot of uh, ideas from there how to create them. And um, you need to unsilence your department because every department knows best; they are the best, and no one else is like them. Try to put them work together because there are silos there. Uh, and this will help have uh, ad hoc self-created teams. Have hackathons. They could be like boxing, but also um, unleash creativity. And um, with a creative workshop, you can explore uh, customer unmet pain points. It will give you a lot of innovations. Um, you need to challenge company industry orthodoxy. I will give you an example that I liked. When we are talking about a um, cleaning company, what do they do mostly? They go to the person house in a company and they clean. But another thing would be what if they will just consult how to clean? So you can call them up. Oh, you know, I have a stain of I don't know what type of coffee on my rug. How can I clean it? So there is something. It's another way to, to, uh, to do your business. So try to go outside. And um, this part, it's um, uh, to give you idea here, you can use those uh, um, method, that method of, that put uh, together things that have nothing in relation with. Um, try to, do, to play the, the role of the competitor. And uh, don't forget to play what if. Okay, um, it was the people, the organization culture, we have ideas, what should do with the ideas? They are good, they have good value, let's say they are scale, how do we prioritize them? Uh, you can have 100 ideas, but you might have resources only for two. And you need to see in your business which are the area, not that needs most of the improvement, but where the improvement will bring most of the value. And in here, for the tool that I consider most relevant is Matrix. There are a couple. This is Boston Consulting Group Matrix. You, most of you know it, and it is the most common and old. What I like uh, most is uh, this one here, Purpose Alignment Model. It's also one of the techniques using the Babok Agile extension. And the thing where it's what brings you market differentiation and mission critical here is the area you where you should put most of your money. In what is a market asparity? It is the finance HR processes that everybody does. You have to do them as good as the industry, but not more than that. Do not improve more than the industry on that because it, that will not bring you additional value. And what is here? Who cares? You might have a lot of processes that could be improved in this area, but they are, the doesn't the differentiate you on the market are not mission critical, so let them as they are broken. Because if you put your resources here, it won't put you better on the market. And the partner, if it's a differentiation, but it's not mission critical for you, just partner with somebody. And it is, um, could, uh, answers to some question. But if the questions are not answered, try to build your own matrix. So take two elements, put them on, a, on the X and Y and uh, draw your matrix. Okay, so we have all this, but now we have to tell the people to recognize because you have to uh, involve the one that comes with the idea and implementing those ideas. You have to really implement those ideas, not just to say and to put them, uh, oh, what a great idea. It is the best one. We'll put them in the drawer and recompense that person. And nobody says about money because it's not the most important thing. Just give recognition. Put that person in charge of the project, of the idea, because he'll put all the, the heart in it and it will make it work more than any consultant or new manager. And I, oh, I said, I, uh, this like spring and summer, I went through such a process. And um, what I can say, the process, 
um, created with an external company. Uh, it is just 20% of everything. And it, uh, the easiest of implemented to be implemented is the most visual. And the company can say, okay, we are innovative. We have this system in place. It is great. It covers everything, which is not true because when they will try to, um, to implement it, they will find that certain areas are not covered. And what is important, it is just a framework. And um, it has to be adapted and it's rarely adapted. There are going to be some company taking it very strictly and following it and not adapting at what they are encounter. A lot depends on the, the local culture, the support. Because I'm giving you an example. The company I'm working on is like in 40, seven countries now. One of the most important is Brazil. I, um, and I have to say, the people from there um, come with the most of the ideas. Why? Because there is a lot of lobby in that business unit for them to come with ideas at all the levels. Because in Europe, the ones that submit ideas are usually top management, managers, people with very important titles in their name. But uh, in, um, in the Americas, the people from there are quite uh, the one that are in the um, delivery part of our products because um, they are the one that feel um, the problems that encounter every day the, the issues and they come with solution for that part. And they have, there is the lobby and there is support for, for them to um, to put their ideas on the map, to put their, their ideas on, on the light. So I was quite surprised, and this is true for most of the initiatives. So there is a cultural difference, very strong. Because us in Europe, um, I might just say, uh, it is like, oh, I'm not good enough because we are always comparing with the best of best. And sometimes we underestimate ourselves and we don't have the courage to speak aloud our ideas. So it's a cultural thing. And then the mindset, uh, I said depends of, on our self-awareness and depends also on, on the education. And it's, I'm not talking about the school education, but of the continuous education. The idea to learn all the time, to be open to new, to uh, go ask why and to go through new areas and new domains, what, is, what I could learn from there. And I like to finish with something from Bernard Shaw. The reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all the progress depends on the unreasonable man. So, do something new uh, and ask, um, uh, what's why not, in fact? What should be so difficult when it could be easier? Thank you very much.